two-thirds of Americans are worried about inflation. About half of the middle class and 70 percent of low-income families just told Gallup that rising prices have been a personal hardship for their households. That's why 67 percent of the American people say that Washington needs to cut back on spending and printing money. But here in Washington, Democrats are bound and determined to do just the opposite. They want to try the crazy strategy of inflating their way out of inflation. Another massive, reckless taxing and spending spree. Even the most generous estimates, when the CBO has to swallow all, all of the Democrats' accounting gimmicks at face value, will say their proposal would entail $800 billion in new deficit spending over the next five years alone, over just five years. Outside experts who are allowed to reject Democrats' obvious budget gimmicks find the real cost, the real cost of the bill would actually be close to $5 trillion. That's with a T, trillion dollars. And after a decade, it would increase deficits by $2.8 trillion. But the reckless price tag actually isn't the only problem. What is remarkable is that the Democrats want to spend all of these trillions but not leave citizens with any impressive, enduring national project in return. There's no Hoover Dam, interstate highway system, or moon landing on the other side of their mountains of borrowed money. Nothing like that. Just a giant catalog of socialist mediocrity. New entitlements here, new transfer programs there, new ways to let bureaucrats run families' lives, and shameless, shameless goodies for specific interest groups who support the political left. A giant, muddled mess that would leave families with fewer child care choices and higher costs, with fewer new prescription drugs and cures, with higher prices for less reliable energy, literally a reckless taxing and spending spree that hurts American families and actually, believe it or not, helps China. There are a lot of big, sweeping, radical changes in their proposal that would change families' lives dramatically and entirely for the worst. But in between the sweeping wish fulfillment for people who call themselves democratic socialists, there's also a remarkable amount of just pure waste absurd, literally absurd little giveaways and interest group goodies. A billion here, a billion there, and hope the American people won't notice if it's buried in enough bureaucratic gibberish. So let me give you a few examples. This bill would supply billions of dollars to help colleges and universities indoctrinate college students with even more left-wing propaganda and billions more to give them made-up Potemkin jobs in a make-work program they're calling a Civilian Climate Corps. This, this at a time when industries already cannot find workers. Their bill would set aside multiple billions of dollars to put the federal government employees like IRS agents and postal carriers into brand new electric vehicles. Earlier this year, the Biden administration made sure that the that luxury Teslas with a sticker price of up to $97,000 were on the list for government procurement. $97,000 per vehicle. So working families might be having to choose between heating costs and new shoes for the kids. Oh, but don't worry. Democrats will make sure IRS auditors can cruise around in Silicon Valley's finest. Their proposal would create a huge $29 billion slush fund that activists are applauding as the foundation for something called, now listen to this, a National Green Bank. Can you say Solyndra on steroids? An entire government bank to finance pipe dreams that can't earn support 
out in the real economy. Separately, they're planning to spend multiple billions of taxpayer dollars for something the liberals are calling, listen to this one now, tree equity. I'll let that one speak for itself. Of course, Madam President, the Green New Deal folks aren't the only constituency Democrats want to pay off. This reckless taxing and spending spree is also designed to knock out all their Christmas shopping for trial lawyers, big labor bosses, Ivy League administrators, and blue state millionaires all in one fell swoop. There's the state and local tax carve out, the SALT gimmick that would give an extra tax cut to two thirds of the households making a million dollars or more a year. Perhaps to make sure these reckless policies set good press, Democrats have included a $1.6 billion bailout for the news media. I'm not making this up. We're essentially talking about government welfare for newsrooms, for newsrooms. Oh, listen, it goes on and on and on. There's a new special tax breaks for rich universities, massive endowments. And then there's pure pork of the old school kind. The Speaker of the House tried to sneak in hundreds of millions of dollars for a special park in San Francisco. And the Senate Democratic leader has spent months trying to double the bill's funding for public housing so that chronically mismanaged authority in his hometown could get, listen to this, $40 billion to clean up its messes. And then there's pure pork of the old school kind. Speaker of the House tried to sneak in hundreds of millions of dollars, as I indicated earlier, for the park. There's even what appears to be a $33 million kickback that is largely for one of Democratic, one Democratic congressman whose vote Speaker Pelosi literally had to lock down. Out of nowhere, one mostly dormant government commission that is important to this particular Democrat's district gets a funding increase of 13,000%. 13,000%. You heard that right, a funding increase of 13,000%. What a terrific coincidence for this particular Democratic House member. So take a step back. Our colleague's proposal isn't some big national leap into the 21st century. It's an endless, endless hodgepodge of this nonsense. Partisan back scratching, interest group giveaways, and shameless, shameless waste. And through tax hikes and inflation, working, working American families will foot the bill. <laughs>